The subject of our next lecture is a boundary representation of solids, which is currently the standard in industry. Let me give small introduction. The boundary of the solid is a two-dimensional manifold. Each point of the boundary has a neighborhood with one-to-one -one correspondence to a disk in the plane. Local modifications of the boundary are performed using such operations as moving vertex, edge or face. Topological modifications are performed using Euler's operators, which include adding and removing vertices, edges and faces. These operators satisfy Euler's formula and thus ensure topological validity of the resulting solids. From the practical modeling point of view, boundary representation is used for visualization of constructive solid geometry or function representation defined objects. Currently, most commercial modeling programs use boundary representation not only for visualization, but also for mathematical definition of objects. Systems based on the approach are exceedingly complex and prone to error. Main disadvantages of boundary representation are following. The first one is the Boyce models, especially in the case of free-form surface approximation by triangles. The second one is complex algorithms for performing set theoretic operations. The third one is two-dimensional manifold boundaries are not closed under set theoretic operations on corresponding solids. And the fourth one is boundary representation is not directly applicable for representing topological complexes with elements of lower dimensionality. The typical problems of boundary represented models in practice are cracks or gaps between adjacent faces, inappropriate intersections, incorrect normals and internal walls, non-manifold topology and others. Moreover, boundary-represented models do not represent logical structure of the objects and history of its creation. Due to above problems, boundary-represented models should not be considered equival quality models. Boundary representation is helpful during the creation and editing of geometric primitives and necessary for rendering using modern graphic hardware. Hybrid systems using boundary representation based interaction and visualization together with mathematical rigorous representations are needed for digital preservation of cultural objects. We will cover the following topics in this lecture. Main boundary representation notions will be introduced. The notion of manifold will be explained together with conditions for the object construction, including the fundamental Euler's formula. Winged edge structure is special interest as the main boundary representation data structure. Euler operators and set operations are the modeling instruments of the boundary representation. We also will discuss the issues of mutual conversion between boundary representation and constructive solid geometry. Let us first give several needed definitions and then illustrate them by examples. In the boundary representation, a solid is represented by segmenting its boundary into a finite number of bounded subsets, usually called faces or patches, and representing each face by its boundary edges and vertices. The period description has two parts, a topological description of the connectivity and orientation of vertices, edges and faces, and a geometric description for embedding these surface elements in space. The topological description specifies vertices, edges and faces abstractly and indicates their incidences and adjacencies. The geometric description specifies, for example, the coordinates of vertices or the equations of the surface containing the faces. Historically, BREP evolved from a description of polyhedra in computer graphics. This description is based on the elements of polygons such as shown vertex, edge and face on the triangle. In the shown example of a polyhedral surface description, topological information is given by two top tables, one for polygon surfaces or faces and another for edges. The table for faces contains for each the face name and the list of edges that bound the face. Note the description of the quadrangle and triangle in this table. The table for edges contains the edge name and the list of vertices that bound the edge. Geometric information is presented by the lower table of vertices, given by their coordinates. The boundary representation is now dominating commercial card and animation systems. Let us consider an example, a boundary representation for a cube. A solid can be represented by its boundary surface. 
To define a boundary surface, we can introduce points, vertices, curves, edges, and surface patches, faces, and stitch them together. See the figure. This boundary representation has two parts, right part of the figure, topological and geometric information. Thus, the face F1 is bounded by edges from E1 to E4, as it's shown in the graph at the right side. The edge E1 is bounded by the vertices V1 and V2, and so on. Let's consider properties of boundary representation. Domains of BREP are as rich as those of cell decomposition or constructive solid geometry schemes. If we are given a constructive solid geometry scheme, it is always possible to design BREP scheme with the same domain. These days, BREP is applied in many different areas from architecture to gaming, and it is de facto standard for solid modeling. It is an ambiguous representation if faces are represented unambiguously. As illustrated in these two pictures, a purple cube or orange cylinder can be represented by many different BREPs. It means this representation is not unique. Validity of BREP is a huge problem because of cracks between phase control requires expensive calculations. BREP is not concise at all. BREP files are about 10 to 1000 times bigger than corresponding constructive solid geometry. Complex BREPs are difficult for humans to construct. This representation is efficient in line and shaded drawings and also good for graphics interaction, for example, edge selection and moving, and topological applications, for example, to calculate the solid genius using Euler's Poincaré formula. There exist polygonal and curved faces in BREP. Curved faces can be approximated by polygons or represented by parametric or implicit surfaces. The notion of the face is unfortunately not well defined in the case of curved surfaces. See the example. What are the faces here? See the solid object at the left. Its boundary representation is shown at the right. It consists of nine faces. Two of them have holes and one has curved surface. Even from this simple example, it's clear that it's not easy to build a BREP model manually. Two-dimensional manifold or simply two-manifold is a formal description of a surface with good behavior. Every point on a two-manifold has a neighborhood of points around it that is topologically the same as a disk in the plane. There is a continuous one-to-one -one correspondence between the neighborhood and the disk. On a two-manifold, each point shown as a black dot has a neighborhood of surrounding points that is topological disk, shown in gray in A and B. If an object is not a two-manifold, then it has points that do not have a neighborhood that is topological disk. In the example of figure C, more than two faces share an edge. Any neighborhood of the edge point contains points from each of those faces. Such neighborhood is not a topological disk, thus the surface is not a two-manifold. Many BREP systems support only solids whose boundaries are closed oriented to manifolds in 3D space. Thus, surfaces that intersect or touch themselves are excluded. A manifold surface is orientable if we can distinguish two different sides, for example, sphere, torus, and so on. The Mobius strip and the Klein bottle are non orientable surfaces. Regularized set theoretic operations on two manifold objects may result in a non manifold object. For example, the shown union of two L brackets at the left is non manifold. There are several ways to treat non manifolds in modeling systems. Let's consider three approaches to treating non manifold structures. First approach objects must be manifolds. Operations on solid with non-manifold results, as in figure A, are considered an error. Second approach. Objects are topological manifolds, but geometric description permits coincidence of topologically separate structures. In the figure B, two separate edges geometrically coincide, and in the figure C, two faces coincide. 
In the third approach, non-manifold objects are permitted and the system is ready to deal with them. Faces of a BREP model should satisfy the following conditions. A finite number of faces defines the boundary of a solid. A face of an object is a subset of the object's boundary. The union of all faces of an object defines its boundary. A face is itself a subset or limited region of some primitive surface. A face must have a finite area and must be dimensionally homogeneous, must not have dangling edges or isolated points. Faces must be represented unambiguously. For example, for the image at the left, what is the face? Is it the hatched small triangle on the sphere or the wide part of the sphere without the triangle? Bounding edges of the face have to be oriented according to some convention. For example, a face bonding curve is parameterized in a consistent direction so that the vector n by t points to the face side of the curve, where n is a normal and t is a tangent vector. See the right side example. The curve is parameterized in the counterclockwise direction and the vector n by t points to the face side. Now let's consider polyhedron notion. Polyhedrons are simplest BREP objects. A 3D polyhedron is a solid that is bounded by a set of polygons. Each edge connects two vertices and is shared by exactly two faces. At least three edges meet at each vertex. Faces do not interpenetrate. A simple polyhedron can be deformed into a sphere as it has no holes. It's characterized by three numbers, V numbers of vertices, E number of edges, and F number of faces. These values are shown on the slide for some simple polyhedra. The BREP of simple polyhedron satisfies Euler's formula. Let us check it for a cube. 8 vertices minus 12 edges plus 6 faces equals 2. The BREP of two manifolds that have faces with holes satisfies the generalized Euler's formula, where the new items are H is the number of holes in the faces, C is the number of separate components or parts, G is the genus, which is number of through holes or the number of handles. For a sphere, G is 0, for a torus, G is 1. Topological relationships of adjacency and incidence are important in BREP processing. A polyhedron has nine classes of topological relationships between pairs of elements, vertices, edges and faces, as shown on the slide. For example, the second in the top row relationship means all edges adjacent to the given vertex. The first relationship in the middle row means two vertices incident to the given edge. Another example is the second in the bottom row, means all edges incident to the given face. Different applications need different adjacency information. The first group of relationships are needed in wireframe or vector graphics to know how vertices are joined. The second group of relationships is used in set operations to know the ring of faces around the vertex. The third group of relationships is adjacency among faces. It's needed in Euler operators. Now let's consider a wind edge data structure. This structure represents the boundary of a manifold polyhedral object. The topological information is as follows. Each face is bounded by a set of disjoint edge cycles. One cycle is the outside boundary of the face, the other's bounding holes. Each vertex is adjacent to a circularly ordered set of edges. So the vertex table specifies one of these edges for each vertex. For each edge E1 the following information is given. See the figure. Incident vertices are V1 and V2. Left and right adjacent faces are F2 and F1. Two edges that share vertex V1 are E2 and E3. Two edges that share vertex V2 are E4 and E5. This structure makes it possible to determine in constant time which vertices or faces are associated with an edge. 
It looks like a bird or a butterfly. That is why it's called a wind edge structure. Local modifications of a B-rep solid include tweaking, extruding a face, baveling a vertex, and altering edge or face shape. The left image illustrates the tweaking operation. An object on which tweaking operations are performed is shown in the image A. The shape is changed by moving vertex A, C image B, edge A B, C image C, or face A B C, image D. The right image illustrates extruding a face, top image, beveling a vertex, middle image, and altering edge or face shape, bottom image. Euler operators transform the objects satisfying Euler formula by adding and removing vertices, edges, and faces. The results should satisfy the formula as well. In the example shown below, a cubical polyhedron is correctly modified in figures A and B, splitting a face into two faces in A and replacing the top face by five new faces in B. But in figure C, the result is not a polyhedron because edges 1, 5 and 2, 5 are not shared by two faces each, and early formula will not be satisfied. A linear combination of five primitive operators with their inverses can represent all objects satisfying Euler formula. The list of these basic operations is given on the slide. It's make or kill an edge and a vertex, make a face and an edge, make a body, a face and a vertex, make cavity or passage and a body, make an edge and kill a hole. Euler operators have some clear advantages. First of all, they ensure topological validity of the resulting solids by at least not breaking it. And secondly, they can be used as an intermediate language isolating high-level operations from the underlying data structures. This is a list of Euler operations supported by the Geometric Workbench BREP modeling system. Let us look at some examples. For example, the MEV command, image B, second in the top row, adds a vertex and makes an edge between two vertices. Then MEF command, image C, left in the second row, can be used to add a new edge to the two existing edges and to create a new face. Now we turn to the next class of operations. These are set operations on two-dimensional BREP solids. General approach for set operation performing is generate and test algorithm. Solid S that results from a Boolean operation can be computed as follows. First generating a superset of its boundary as union of the boundary faces of the solids being combined. And finally discarding those faces that are not on S. Let's consider this algorithm in more detail. Union, difference and intersection of these polygons A and B are shown at the bottom. Now we can follow the steps of the algorithm for finding the union of polygons A and B. The problem is to find all the loops consisting of active segments that make the boundary of the new solid. The step 1 of the algorithm is to find all intersection points of the edges of A and B, points 1, 2, 3 and 4. The step 2 of the algorithm is creation segments of the edges of A and B. Each logical segment can include several straight line segments. If the boundary of A is parameterized by parameter U from 0 to 1, then it has four following segments. Step 3. Find a point P0 on the polygon A that is outside of B. Such a point is shown in the top image. Then that segment, here from U4 to U1, is also outside B. Step number 4. 
start at P0 and trace A to the next intersection with B. It's point number 1. Step number 5. Trace the segment of B to its intersection with A. Point 4. We have found one loop, but have not checked all segments. Step 6. Repeat step 3. Find a point on A that is outside of B and find the segment from U2 to U3. Step 7. Repeat step 4. Start at the found point and trace A to the next intersection with B. Thus we find point 3. Step 8. Repeat step 5. Trace the found segment of B to its intersection with A and find point 2. We have found another loop. Finally, the active segments making the resulting boundary are following. We use V1 instead of U1 in B because it has its own parameterization. In two-dimensional solids are bounded by parametric curves. The idea of set operation algorithms is still to find active regions of the bounding curves. These regions are defined by intersection points or primitives. Let us look at the shown example. A union B subtract C with union of two disks and subtracted square region. Following the algorithm described above, we first can find active segments which belong to the boundary of the two disks union. They are shown in bold lines in the upper right picture. Then we subtract the square and with a similar algorithm for the difference operation find the active segments for the final result. They are shown in bold lines in the lower right picture. The next step is to look at set operations on solids bounded by parametric surfaces. The idea is to bring the presented algorithm one dimension higher. Points bound active regions on curves and curves bound active regions on surfaces. The active surface regions or faces on all the primitives define a closed surface of a solid. In the shown example, solid A is a cylinder, B and C a planar half spaces, and D is a solid ball. The constructed solid is made by intersecting the cylinder A with both planar half spaces C and D, and then by making union with the ball. The set theoretic expression is shown on the slide. A intersects with B and C, and union with D. The detected active regions of the four surfaces are shaded in the UW plane. For the cylinder surfaces A at the lower left, for the sphere D at the lower right, for the two planes in the top right images. Let's consider such problem for BREP as point membership classification. For the given point in space and the BREP solid model, we need to detect whether the point is inside, outside or on the boundary of the solid. Standard algorithm for it is casting an array from the given point in arbitrary direction and counting how many times it intersects the solid's boundary. If the number of array surface intersection points is odd, the given point is in. If it is even, the point is out. The example of casting array is represented on this slide. The array cast from in point P has five intersections with the polygon's boundary whereas the array from out point Q has only two intersections. There are problems with casting array. The first question is how do we count intersections when the given point is on the boundary? The next problem is that numerical errors associated with the intersection calculation may produce wrong counts. And the third problem is that array may intersect an edge or a vertex or partly line in a face or an edge. How do we count intersections in such singular cases? This is illustration of such singular cases on this slide. Another example of a singular case where array intersect an edge. There are solutions for such cases. First of all, you can choose array that does not intersect any vertices or edges and does not lie in any faces or edges. Or you can cast several arrays in different directions and use the value that occurs most often. Or you can use more complex algorithms. Now let's consider conversion from constructive solid geometry representation to the boundary representation. 
The provided conversion between representations is the main requirement to the hybrid solid modeling system. Exact conversion from CSG to boundary representation is called boundary evaluation and consists of the following steps. The first step – consider all pairs of intersecting primitives in the CSG tree. The second step – for each pair obtain a set of space curves in which they intersect. The third step – classify each curve against the solid. We can determine those segments that are on the boundary of the solid. Each segment will be an edge of the boundary representation. Step number four. These segments now define faces of the boundary representation on the surface of the primitives. And finally, step number five. By considering the neighborhoods, we derive the topological relationships between different faces. Look at the example of the set difference C between solid A and solid B. Edge E A B is the intersection of two faces, face A and face B. Segment 2 of the edge EAB is on the boundary of the solid C, so it becomes an edge of a face of C. We can construct the full boundary of C in this way. The conversion from BREP to CSG is a more complicated procedure. We input boundary description and need to generate a corresponding CSG tree. The first phase, called geometric phase, has two steps. The first one – decompose the whole 3D model space using half spaces. The half spaces are constructed from the phase geometry of the BREP model. The half spaces divide the model space into a set of cells. See, for example, a two-dimensional solid at the left and its decomposition into cells at the right. The previous example had straight lines as boundaries. Complications in the cell decomposition are introduced by curved faces. Suppose we want to represent the shape shown at the upper left, which is bounded by elliptical edges. To represent it in CSG, we need two elliptical solids H1 and H2, shown at the lower left. The shape can be defined as the difference between H2 and H1. However, this operation will generate one more symmetric shape as shown at the upper right. So, to separate the needed shape from the cost shape, we need to subtract an additional half space shown at the lower right. This step is not well formalized. The second part of the geometric phase is to classify each of the cells as being occupied by the solid or being empty space. In the figure, C6, C10 and C11 are occupied by the solid, other cells are empty. An initial CSG representation can be obtained as the union of these cells. The second or combinatorial phase involves simplifying or minimizing the initial CSG tree. This algorithm applies well-known Boolean optimization techniques from digital logic design. BCSG is a software system for converting boundary representations of solids to efficient constructive CSG representations. BCSG is a C language implementation of the above-mentioned algorithm by Wosler and Shapiro. BCSG handles solid having up to 24 natural quadrate, planar, cylindrical, spherical, conical faces. This is not so many, but the algorithm is complicated and the implementation is heavy. The software accepts BREP models represented as parasolid bodies and converts them to the CSG text representations defined in the Puddle 2 language. Unfortunately, there is no single source where you can find information on this lecture. The basic works were referenced during the lecture. Here is a list of additional references used to prepare this lecture. These are special BREP references on data structures. And the BREP to CSG conversion paper. Thank you for your attention.